Black Metal Lesson 30. Today we're going to be talking about drums and drum programming. I'm going to teach you how to do stuff like this. The good stuff. So we're just going to go over some thrash beats and some blast beats and a few feels to kind of link these things together. So here we're going to start off with some thrash beats and here's some I made earlier. All right, so how did I do it? The first thing you want to do is just get familiar with your DAW and your drum software. So there's a few things to keep in mind. The first of which is drum positioning, because if I go on this kit, we have this hi-hat here on the left. We want to aim for the crashes on the left side of the kit. So I've got this one going on. So I just want to recommend two things if you're using Superior Drummer. The first of which is use these hi-hats and never ever use this ride because when you're doing blast beats, it's just unacceptable. It's disgusting, never use it. It's horrible, sounds bad, it overpowers everything and you can't change it. Doesn't matter what ride you pick, each one is horrible and I can't believe this actually was sold to you guys with this unacceptable, disgusting ride. So don't use it. I'm using the Logic one in the blast beats right here. So if I would just solo the ride, that's my ride. So how do you make a thrash beat? What you wanna do is have a kick on every single beat here. Now I keep it the same velocity because I kind of like that consistent trigger sound. And the snare is when you need to be a bit careful with velocities. Velocities is basically how hard the drum is. So when drummers are doing these kind of drum beats, especially the thrash beats, the snare is usually consistent. So I just keep it at 96 for each one. Of course, it can differ depending on what drum software you're using, but that's how I like it. Now the hi-hats is where you need to be a bit careful with the velocities. So all of the hi-hats on the beat I have slightly stronger than the other ones. So if you see here, here's 55 velocity and there's 53. Because when a drum is playing 16th notes, one hit is slightly harder than the other. Crushes we can keep at the same velocity as the kicks and the snare in this case. Now let me show you a before and after. So this is with the hi-hats at a velocity of 53 and 55. Okay, pretty smooth. Now, if I bring it up to like the 90s, completely unbalanced, it's horrible. Okay, so let's keep it here. Much easier on the ears, much more balanced. So the hi-hats are on every 16th note. I go with a crash at the beginning of every bar especially when I'm changing sections or at the end or beginning of the riff. It's just a nice way to introduce the next section. Soft hit and then a hard hit on the beat. And then you can just copy and paste it as it goes. So that's how you make a normal thrash beat, okay? So I'm just gonna join all these regions together just so you can see it on the MIDI and the score. So as we look at the score, we've got the kicks here and our snares. So a kick on every beat and the snares on the off beats. Okay, that's a basic thrash beat and you wanna make sure you do 16th notes on each one of the beats because it's, it just sounds more brutal, it's just more aggressive. And all the good drummers do it. So there's our thrash beats. Now we can take the same idea and change it into blast beats. Now, all we need to change and do is double up on the kick and the snare, then change the snare velocities, okay? Now the cool thing is about the 16th notes on the hi-hats is that we do not need to change them. So I'm just gonna highlight every single one of the kicks 
copy and paste, like this. And now we've got the speed needed for our blast beats. So now that sounds wrong because our snares are in the wrong place. So I've just highlighted all the snares. And what we're gonna do is move the snare so it's in the middle of each kick. Because instead of working with eighth notes, we're now working with 16th notes. Now everything's highlighted. We're gonna copy this again and see there's a little gap between the other kicks. Highlight, copy. And we're gonna bring down the velocity by about three. The reason being, just like the hi-hats, when drummers play a blast beat, there's a harder hit and a softer hit. Now, let's listen to this. Beautiful. Now we're working at 240, a proper BPM, but if you like those mid-tempo blasts, here's about, I don't know, 170. Weak, let's go to a proper tempo. Yes. Manly blast beats. So that's a thrash beat and that's a blast beat. Now there's a couple more drum beats that we can go over, like a kind of kind of thing. So what we want to do is just copy and paste because it's easy to copy and paste. Okay. Now I'm going to remove almost everything. So I'm just left with the core fundamentals. So again, starting the beat with a crash, that's too fast. So what we're going to do, move our snares over and our hi-hats, just so we have a nice clean working area here. Okay, now here is where we have our kicks. So instead of 16th note kicks for the blast beats, we're gonna have eighth note kicks, just so it you know, brings down the tempo a little bit. Move that over. So here's our first bar. And now we're gonna have the snare on the second beat, right here. Copy and paste these kicks. Move it over here. Copy and paste this again. Now let's listen to the kicks and the snare. Now what I'm gonna do is just take one of the 55 hi-hats, place it here where the snare is. Copy and paste on the next bar and do the same thing, copy and paste and the snare. And the beginning of the next bar. We do not put a crash and a hi-hat at the same time because drummers don't normally do that. Here we go. There we go. Now uh, we've got our drum beat. Then we can just copy and paste all of our kicks and snares. Boop. And again, copy this over. And here we go. Very nice. We can again double up on the hi-hats doing the same thing if you want a bit more push to the music. Highlight, make it a little bit softer. Then we want one of the soft hi-hats here to fill in the rest of the bar. Here we go. So we have a kick on every eighth note, a hi-hat on every quarter note on every beat. And then we have the snare on beat number two. And the next one is gonna be like a kind of bah, 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 bah. aggressive sounding 16th note, double kick, drum beat. We're gonna highlight everything we've done before. Move it over. And because it's 16th notes, we want a kick on every single beat. So highlight, copy, paste there. So yeah, we've got this super fast kick pattern here. Very nice. So we want a snare on every single beat. Copy, paste. And just for the bants, let's have a China right here on E. So we're gonna move that over. and just copy it so it's on every single snare hit. So every beat.
I love that China sound. So aggressive. Move it back. Boom. Now, because I moved over the China, I need to put in another crash. Very nice. Here's our drum beat. Violence. So if you want to make it a bit more real, you can take some of the chinas and bring the velocities down. Uh, there's actually a velocity tool that we can use here. Logic. Bring it down a bit. And you can make it kind of random if you want to. There we go. That's entirely up to you though. I normally keep my symbols sounding consistent. The final thing I want to go over is drum fills. Now, for simplicity's sake, let's just stick to 16th note drum fills, like something like that. So let's have our drum fill at the end of this bar here. Now, I want to have four different things going on here in these subdivisions here. So I, let's say, let's have a snare, high tom, snare, middle tom. So what I do is I make sure there's a kick for every tom. We're going to delete this. Going to delete these kicks. So we've got four kicks. So now let's talk about these 16th note rolls. Let's move our snare all the way here. Now I'm going to copy the snare. Bring down the velocity by two and do the same thing again. Bring it down. So we have this slight decrease in power here. Okay. So there's our snare. Then we're going to copy that here because I want the snare again on the third hit. Now the toms, we're going to highlight our snare. There is our high tom, and there's our lower tom. So now we have a nice transition into the double kicks with the china. And that is how I program my drums. There's probably a much better way of doing this, but this is the way I do it. I like to go piece by piece and build things up from there. So this is a nice introduction to drum programming and this more or less has all the kind of tips and tricks and techniques that you need for black metal. Of course, you can make the fills more interesting. Of course, you can add a ride. I haven't just for convenience's sake. I've just kept the drum kit nice and simple. Of course, you can mess around with some of the drum kicks and the drum patterns and the placements, add ghost notes. You can do it however you want. I normally keep it quite bare bones and focus more on the aggressive side of drumming, especially blast beat drumming. So before we finish up, just a few tips. Watch drummers, watch drum videos, see what they're doing, figure out what they're doing, copy it and put it in your drum programming.